Hello and welcome. I'm working on making two more journals to put into my Etsy shop and these covers are my hand-painted uh, experiments with acrylic on uh, craft paper and these are the two that I had left. This time when I first my first pair I made TN size. This size is um, a bit larger just because I personally like it and I thought I would find out uh, how you felt about that. These uh, turn out to be six by nine and I have been doing some of the um, uh, some of the work off screen of course. Um, if any of you who are interested in uh, seeing a little bit more you might go to my playlist called uh, JJ Making and uh, the f uh, there is more explanation in the um, first video of the series. So, this is the uh, paper that I painted on uh, craft paper. It has its uh, covering of Mod Podge to give it a, um, a wonderful, almost uh, leathery um, or fabricy feeling. And it has been lined with green um, cardstock. Each of the journals is uh, very, very similar in pages, so I have a uh, an opening page to um, uh, of cardstock to play up the colors in the uh, cover, and this one has a piece of my uh, painty paper. A page of uh, from a color book. This is a um, coffee dyed page. This is interesting paper that I found at a, a mall when I was on vacation and um, as you can see they are not uh, the graph paper is not squares but rectangles and uh, it just absolutely tickled me and the paper is very soft and satiny very lovely. This is a page from a, uh, a book that I also purchased um, at an antique mall. This is the uh, resume paper that is uh, watermarked and it is 100% cotton. And uh, as I have told you before, I have used this because it's 100% cotton for um, watercolor and it takes it just a treat. This is a page from a, an... Um, a journal. So I trimmed it down to fit this book. Here's a page of uh, dyed paper that I recently experimented with. Here a nice piece of um, uh, satiny white cardstock and in the middle uh, a piece of Canson uh, cold press 140 pound XL and I took the, um, the liberty of uh, giving you a, uh, a peek through here. I used my pattern that I've been using for, uh, that I made for myself and I thought I would share it because it also kind of looks very similar to the, uh, to the uh, motif on the cover. So that is the uh, center of the journal and uh, I'm going now to be setting this aside for the moment and this journal is another piece of my artwork that is um, uh, finished with uh, Mod Podge and uh, lined with uh, pink cardstock and then a piece of cardstock, a piece of my painting paper and I was really tickled with the way this came out. Uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, there's even a little bit of um, iridescent and metallic on that one. So a piece of a, um, as you can see, a piece of a color book, a piece of coffee dyed paper, the rectangular graph paper, a piece 
from my favorite book, and this paper is also just as delicious and satiny feeling as this one. Here is the 100% cotton um, resume paper, the ledger sheet, the paper that I dyed, the uh, cardstock, and the uh, peek through that I'm going to cut uh, on the Canson watercolor paper. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to uh, do some cutting on this. I know that many of you have expressed an interest in this, and I think then, for those, for anyone who might purchase this journal, they have an opportunity to um, to work around this cutout and play, and see what they're going to see through the flower onto the uh, uh, page. I have left this uh, because it's cut out. I have left this as the it's going to be the center of the journal. I am enjoying making these, especially so that I can share those uh, Carol painted covers because they were rolled up and now they have, uh, they found good use and uh, my first two have found a good home. You don't need to watch me cut all the way through this. I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to be um, careful to um, use this white eraser on this um, pencil and get, all, get out any pencil marks that might be left. Um, I will return. While I was um, cutting away at this, I had to think, and I decided to um, embellish the corners of, uh, with these punches. Uh, two of the heavier sheets. I'm not always too thrilled with the way the uh, finer sheets work in these. So, um, and the shape of this flower reminded me a bit of this. So, I um, I trimmed the uh, two of the sheets, and now it's time for me to uh, get out some uh, some silk for the. Uh, sewn binding. That would work. That would work. And one more. Hmm. One more. Maybe. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I'm going to do the, um, a similar thing that I did with the uh, first two journals. I'm going to uh, cut a generous bit here because I want to leave uh, enough of a, a tie uh, to sew the journal together and to give you the opportunity if you wish to uh, make any changes to the journal or uh, to take it apart. Uh, that would of course be completely up to you since it is uh, meant for your journaling and your playtime. So I'm going to uh, do the same thing here.
And then I'm going to take this to my uh, other work table and cut and cut the holes. so that I can sew. And then have another think about what it is that I'm going to uh, do with the journal, if anything. Alrighty, there we go for that journal. While I have these papers out, let me pick. Let me pick papers for this one. Uh, sorry, pick ribbon. Now, hmm. That might work. That goes nicely there. Decisions, decisions. Oh, I didn't realize I had that color. Oh, pretty. here on me. Okay, the question is, which one? I think this one works very nicely with that. Yes. Alrighty, I'm going to cut the ribbon for this journal. Use this design for the uh, cutting and go to my other bench and use this template that I have made to uh, set the holes and then when I return I will be uh, sewing and finishing up these two journals. Well, I've gotten out the same needle that I used the last time that worked so well with this silk. The one with the strange little double eye. And I got those holes in there and that was a nail biter. So. You're going to play that game and get away with it. Do not think so. There you go. Now. Grab the ribbons, pull them up out of the way so they don't play that little game again. And then I can put this in next to 
through the hole next to the ribbons that are there. Because after so many years of dealing, well, how are we doing? This has to be. This has to be. Let's see. Well, I'm just going to even the troops off. There we go. Now, three in the back and three in the front. Check the inside. Yes, nice and taut. Very good. And now I'm going to tie these loosely so that if you decide to use something else or to deconstruct this in any way, it will be rather easy to tease this knot loose and remove the, uh, the ribbons. And then if you, or if you decide that you are going to uh, keep it, then I would suggest that you put a dot of glue, uh, uh, that you put a dot of glue on the, uh, on the knot, or fabric tack, all, this, all the same beast, and it will, uh, it will work a treat. So, now let me have a check here. Now everybody's tightly tacked down. Oh yes, oh yes. Very nice. All righty. Now, put that one aside. And here we go again. This needle threader has been my last friend, my best friend probably for the last uh, 20 years of stitching. It goes through needle point needles and any other number of things and makes life so easy. So very easy. Alrighty. And a pull. <laughs> okay, it says in the fine print. Now, yeah, what are you doing to me? Oh. Okay, I can, I can always jump to plan B. Always jump to plan B. Yeah. Well, this is so typical of this pure silk. It's, uh, it tests your character. Done. Done. Now, 
here we go. made these holes a little bit bigger this time so that it would not have an excuse to test me. Hold on to this tail. Think. I'm going to shorten that a little bit. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe not. Okay, if it's up here, how much are we going to have? Hold, hold the outside, and right back through the hole, not getting anybody hung up, which is the whole trick of the whole, whole process. this one to the other side of that not too bad and I don't think I like the tension on the green one I'll give that one an extra little tug there we go I think I'll keep those for snippets and a knot and the bow. Here we are. Now, last inspection. And 
there. There we are now. Let's have an inspection of this one. Make sure that everyone is behaving itself here. Absolutely. So, this time I have decided to include a posy and a painty card uh, in heavy watercolor paper. Uh, And I thought that this might be a nice starter card, or you can make pockets or do whatever you might be interested in. So I'm going to uh, set that into the uh, inside of this journal. And the same type of card, I don't know the luck that I had that these would be in the same uh, color families. It's quite extraordinary. And a posy. in the center of this one. I'm going to be uh, putting this uh, video up. It will be coming up tomorrow morning. I will be uh, posting it uh, onto YouTube uh, probably between 7 and 9 uh, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. And I will be uh, putting them both in my Etsy shop um, Probably, um, I think a good time would be uh, noon, noon tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, they should be, uh, they should be up for sale. If you have enjoyed watching this process with my last two uh, hand-painted covers, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with a friend. And I would appreciate your subscribing to my channel. If you look down at the bottom of this, uh, in the description, you will find my uh, Etsy shop. And uh, it's quite easy to, uh, to remember. It's uh, all one word, Carol Martine Art. Bye now.